Iran's long-range new cruise missiles Asef and Pave. General Mackenzie's assessment of Iran's offensive doctrine. A few days ago, Iran unveiled a lethal weapon, the Pave cruise missile. This weapon, like other Iranian weapons, is part of Iran's strategic defense to destroy the military apparatus and operational capabilities of the Americans and Israelis in the region within a short period of time. Such a strategy will only be possible through the use of a range of precise, lethal, and most importantly, cheap weapons. These weapons include the Shahid-136 suicide drone and probably other unknown drones, as well as ballistic missiles, including Fade, Zulfikar, Desful, and Kastelbreaker. To this list should now be added another cheap and lethal long-range weapon. With the Pave cruise missile, which can attack all types of threats in a 360-degree radius, Iran has once again succeeded in developing a weapon of mass at a cost of less than $40,000 with an astonishing range of 1,650 kilometers. This missile is another masterpiece of Iranian engineers in reverse engineering and conducting necessary modifications to this weapon. To complete the effectivity of a large-scale cruise missile attack, the Pave missile has been joined by another air-launched cruise missile. In early February, Tehran partially displayed a large missile, dubbed Asef, carried on a Sukhoi Su-24M Fencer ground attack aircraft. The missile appeared to be very similar to several designs that have emerged from Iran's Meshkat program and is based on the Soviet-era Reduga KH-55 air-launched cruise missile airframe. Iran has mass-produced a less fuel-efficient turbojet design for propulsion, while at the same time managed to achieve long ranges of more than 1,500 kilometers for its cruise missiles. Combining the Su-24 MS combat radius of around 500 kilometers with Asaf's likely range of 1,500 kilometers would give Iran the ability to deliver a cruise missile to its desired aim of around 2,000 kilometers. From the southwestern edge of Iran, a combined range of 1,500 kilometers would cover all of Israel and most of Saudi Arabia. An Iranian land attack cruise missiles, LSEM, project was first reported in 2012 and associated at the time with the name Meshkat, though no missile was ever shown with this name displayed. Instead, Iran unveiled the Somar ground-launched LCM in 2015, followed in 2019 by the Haviza. Both used the KH-55 airframe design, though the Haviza engine appeared to be a turbojet rather than the Summer's turbofan design. Iran's other main line of LCM development and the more successful so far, is known as Project 351. This LCM has been provided to the Houthi movement, Ansarullah, in Yemen, where it is called the Quds. Iran has never publicly paraded or claimed ownership of Project 351 and has denied involvement in the supply of the weapon to Ansarullah. Unlike anti-ship missiles, which are equipped with an altimeter to adjust the height from the water surface and a radar to detect and track the enemy's vessel in the final phase of the flight and an inertial navigation system to guide the missile in the mid-course phase, land attack cruise missile, due to the need to move on land tolls, in addition to inertial navigation systems, require systems to determine the movement path to the target very accurately. In sea-skimming cruise missiles, the radar can easily find the enemy vessel from a distance of tens of kilometers, but land attack cruise missiles must accurately hit a target the size of a building. Pave cruise missile has a range of 1,650 kilometers and its flight height is less than 50 meters, which will make its detection and interception by radars and defense systems extremely difficult. At the same time, it shows that the IRGC Aerospace Force has achieved the necessary systems and infrastructure to guide the missile at a range of over 1,500 kilometers and at a very low altitude. The published images of this missile show that Pave has retractable wings on its fuselage and that the engine of this cruise missile is located outside the fuselage and attached to its upper part. For this reason, Pave differs, at least externally, from other ground-based cruise missiles presented so far, as the wings are raised from the fuselage and the engine is located above the fuselage. 
In the published images, the missile is fired from a launcher that has a single launcher. According to these pictures, another advantage of this missile emerges. The small size of the launcher and its high mobility allow the system to prepare for launch in any part of the country. The use of such launchers greatly increases the survivability of this system and gives it the ability to fire quickly and then leave the area as soon as launching is finished. The retractable wings of the PAVE missile will at least facilitate the ability to launch multiple missiles in a larger launch volume. The PAVE cruise missile will give Iran the capability of a 360-degree attack on its targets. This missile can take different routes to the target and even change direction while approaching the target and attack the target from different angles that have weak spots or blind spots in the radar. The appearance of this cruise missile indicates a reduction in the diameter of the missile and thus a reduction in radar reflectivity. In addition, the engine of this missile is mounted on the fuselage, which may contribute to the reduction of radar reflectivity. Another capability of cruise missiles that can likely be used in PAVE is the ability of these missiles to attack in groups and communicate with each other during the attack. In this method, one of the missiles acts as the leader of the attacking missile group and controls the other missiles. If necessary, one or more of the missiles are sent forward by the platoon leader and actually decoyed to pave the way for the other missiles to hit the target accurately. According to the former U.S. commander of CENTCOM, General Kenneth McKenzie, asymmetric approaches are typically a weaker power's best response to a stronger opponent, particularly when there is a perceived disparity of strategic interest. It is evident, and in fact a stated principle of U.S. strategy, that the problem of Iran is of lesser importance than China, Russia, or North Korea. This overt trumpeting of priorities has had a profound impact on Iran's behavior, and the conduct of U.S. allies and partners in and out of the region as well. For the weaker power Iran this conflict is ultimately about regime survival, while it is not an existential consideration for the stronger power the United States. This asymmetry of interest has created opportunities for Iran. Nowhere has the combination of asymmetric approaches and bronze metal technology been more consistent, or more successful, than in the domain of unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs. Here, discussion will center on a triad of Iranian unmanned, long-range strike systems. First is Iran's large and growing theater ballistic missile, TBM, force, which consists of both solid and liquid-fueled airframes capable of ranging anywhere in the Middle East. Second is Iran's newly emerging land attack cruise missile, LCM, force, composed of air-breathing, winged airframes that are typically low-flying and radar evasive. Some LCM variants have adequate range to hit any target in the region from Iran. Finally, and the focus of this analysis, are unmanned aerial vehicles. UVs can be used for surveillance or attack, and they come in many shapes and sizes, from hand-launched, short-range variants to platforms as big as a modern fighter aircraft that may have a very long range. Both can be difficult to defend against. This new triad delivers the equivalent of combined arms warfare, a sophisticated approach to combat wherein the actions a defender takes to optimize against one of these threats opens a pathway for an attack by other means. Combining these capabilities places the defender on the horns of a dilemma. For instance, Iran's UAVs could be used to swarm either U.S. or partner Patriot radars in the region in the early stages of a comprehensive attack. If these radars are knocked out, then the Patriot missiles themselves, the core capability to defend against both LACMs and TBMs would be rendered irrelevant. Moreover, UVs are relatively inexpensive and can be funneled to proxies operating near potential targets across the region. All these capabilities are destabilizing and dangerous. UVs pose the most immediate threat to Middle East security because of their low cost, widespread availability, and potential deniability since their point of origin can be disguised by employing a convoluted flight path. Since fall of 2022, this threat has expanded into Eastern Europe, as Iran has begun furnishing UAVs and training for Russia to support its aggressive war in Ukraine. The Iranian UAV threat has evolved rapidly, while regional responses have often been lethargic. As a result, 
The gap is widening, and the threat grows every day. This is a new reality that not everyone fully understands. What would a war in the region using these potent asymmetric capabilities look like? Such a conflict between Iran and its adversaries would be a fire's war, not a war of maneuver or invasion. Some of this is driven by necessity. Iran does not possess an army with expeditionary capabilities, although its proxy forces across the region do provide some form of power projection. Iran's air force is small and indifferently maintained and trained. Iran does have some naval capabilities, but beyond sea denial operations, these would be very limited. In Western military thought, there is an aphorism, fire without maneuver is indecisive. Maneuver without fire is disastrous. Success in the war will be based on the relative exchange rate between the ability of Iran's military including the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, to generate long-range striking power against targets, and the ability of the United States and its partners to reduce that offensive capability, while defending vital areas. Iran's theory of victory would rest on inflicting so much pain on neighboring states that the war would eventually end on conditions favorable to the regime. The Islamic Republic would have every incentive to employ a counter-value approach to targeting, striking the population centers of its adversaries in an attempt to force a political solution. Iran would seek to maximize early strikes, then offer to de-escalate before the United States could gather, deploy, and apply its overwhelming strength. As a result, a war of this type could cause many thousands of casualties, both military and civilian especially if initial efforts to de-escalate proved unsuccessful. Thanks for watching and see you next time.